Hey everybody, this is the audio to accompany this week's newsletter in the Sell Your Thoughts channel. Um, and it's called Small is Beautiful. And it's based on a book by E.F. Schumacher, um, which was, uh, the subtitle is Economics as if People Matter. And it was quite a significant book in my life and it kind of speaks to this. Schumacher was a German Rhodes Scholar um, who worked uh, with the help of uh, John Maynard Keynes. And you would have heard of Keynesian Economics which is how a lot of the world runs. Um, and they taught at Oxford University together. Um, he also wrote a book called A Guide for the Perplexed. Uh, so if you can get a copy of Small is Beautiful, Economics as if People Mattered, it's an awesome book. Um, it's amazing for me how much freedom there is for people in a practice model. And when you run a practice where you sell your time, it enables you to do work you love with people you like the way you want, which is a core mantra in our business school. And often a time-based practice that we propose is criticized by typical business advisors. And they'll say things like, you can't achieve the leverage required for freedom, like you can't scale like a business can. They sort of say you can't leverage other people's time or money when you run a practice. And this is true in the typical growth for growth sake mindset that underpins much of the modern commercial world. But it doesn't guarantee happiness, joy, or fulfillment, or that the principal in the business actually takes home any more money. And it's not applicable at all or helpful to how we suggest you run your practice. So running a practice requires a fundamentally different paradigm from a classic business model. Now, there's sort of this aphoristic fable that observes a well-meant unsolicited advice based on conversation between a business person and a fisherman. Um, spoiler alert, the ridiculous of growth as a mandate for success is the punchline. So this business person's on the beach, sees this fisherman and goes, you should get a fleet of boats and it keeps scaling up and up and up until they sort of go, why? Well, then you could do this. Why? Well, then you could do this. And why? And then you could do this. And then at the end of the game, they go, why? Well, then you could sit on a beach. And the fisherman looks at him, looks down at the sand and shakes his head. In other words, the growth for growth's sake would have just returned him back to the sense of fulfillment and joy that he had running his smaller based life. Now, this is not about socialism. Don't get caught up on that. Um, I am not at all socialist, but the conversation's worth following on. I also enjoyed a podcast between Tyson Junkerporter, who's a professor of Indigenous knowledge here in Australia, um, down at Deakin University, author of a book called Sand Talk, and Jim Rutt, an old school techpreneur um, with links to the Game B movement. Um, Young Caporta kind of undermines the growth mandate of Western markets and poses that we ponder the difference between growth and increase. The podcast's worth checking out, and in the written version, I've put a link. The point is that Nobel Prize winner Schumacher, uh, he explained in his landmark book, Small Actually Is Beautiful. Um, his book of that title, Small Is Beautiful, that's a great read. And the chapter on Buddhist economics speaks to why one of our faculty, Alex Hagen, a brilliant thinker in his own right, observed how the thought leaders practice model, like what we teach, he says this model hacks capitalism. Well, actually, he said I have, but that's a little awkward to tout when I'm reading this, writing this or speaking to you. Anyways, the thing is, you can make half to one and a half million per annum in a practice model with 60 to 7% coming out to you, the principal. You invest that in take-home money in sort of capital growth assets with a good market return, and in seven to 15 years, you'll be financially free. And I know this works. It's not a get-rich-quick game or a start-grow-exit-your-business for a lot of like figures game, you know, but it is reliable. And more importantly, it's fulfilling immediately, not eventually. So in a practice, we focus on take-home versus turnover. And when the work is a labor of love and you are doing what you were born to do, when you're self-expressed in service to others, the grind disappears. Add to all of this the power of positioning that you get as a thought leader to flip business development from chasing new business to attracting it, and you have a very potent idea indeed. I love being a thought leader running a commercially successful practice, and so do hundreds of successful graduates of our program. I don't say that so you'll come and join the program. Many of you listening to this already are. I say it to talk about this as the third choice. You don't need a job. You don't need a business. You can run a practice. If this appeals to you, then come join us. Um, enroll, learn, start the process of connecting with the curriculum that helps you you know, capture, package, and share what you know with the world. Love to see you on the other side of this.